In this video, we'll cover some of the most commonly used building automation input sensors and where they're located. Building control sensors are located throughout a building in strategic positions to monitor and control various aspects of the building system. Here are some commonly used building automation control sensors and why they're used. Current sensor. A current sensor, also known as a current transducer, are used to measure the electrical current flowing through a conductor or piece of equipment. They play a key role in tracking energy usage of equipment by monitoring the current draw. The current sensor is typically installed around the conductor carrying the electrical current of the equipment being monitored. The sensor may be a split core design allowing it to be easily clamped around an existing wire without interrupting the electrical circuit. The output signal of the current sensor is typically an analog voltage or current that is proportional to the measured current. This signal can be fed into a data acquisition system, energy meters, or control system for further processing and analysis. By continuously monitoring the current draw using the current sensor, the energy usage of the equipment can be calculated. The output signal from the current sensor can be processed and integrated over time to track the energy usage of the equipment. This information can be used for energy monitoring, load profiling, energy management, or billing purposes. Dew point temperature sensor. A dew point temperature sensor is used to measure the dew point temperature, which is the temperature at which air becomes saturated and condensation begins to form. There are some that calculate the dew point by reading the temperature and humidity and having an onboard program calculate the dew point temperature. A dew point temperature sensor is required on a chilled water radiant panel like this chilled beam here. This dew point sensor is mounted on the pipe and sends the information to the controller. If the dew point temperature hits the set point, an output signal is sent to the control valve to close, preventing any more chilled water from circulating through the chilled beam until the proper conditions are met that prevent condensation from occurring as chilled beams have no condensate drains. Carbon monoxide sensor. Carbon monoxide, CO, sensors are commonly used in conjunction with garage exhaust systems to monitor the concentration of CO in the air and ensure the safety of occupants. Garage exhaust systems are designed to remove exhaust gases, including CO, from the garage space. They typically include ventilation fans or ductwork connected to the outside. The CO sensor can increase the fan speed in conjunction with a VFD when certain concentrations of carbon monoxide are reached. The activation of the exhaust system helps to reduce CO levels, providing a safer environment for occupants. When the CO concentration exceeds the threshold, the sensor can provide an audible or visible alarm to alert occupants of the hazardous conditions. Differential pressure transmitter for dirty filters. Differential pressure is used to indicate when filters have become dirty. When the filters are clean, there is less pressure drop across them. As dirt becomes trapped on the filter media, the pressure drop across the filter increases, which increases the differential pressure. By putting a differential pressure transmitter, an alert can be sent to the facility personnel to change the filters. Increased pressure drop across the filter causes an increase in fan energy and utility cost. CO2 sensors. Carbon dioxide CO2 sensors are used to monitor indoor air quality and ensure adequate ventilation. They are often placed in areas where people gather, such as conference rooms, classrooms, and auditoriums. CO2 sensors, when integrated with economizers, play a vital role in controlling ventilation air to a room based on the levels of carbon dioxide CO2 present in the indoor environment. The CO2 sensor continuously measures the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air. Based on building codes and standards such as ASHRAE standard 
there are recommended or required ventilation rates for occupied spaces. These rates are designed to maintain healthy indoor air quality. CO2 sensors help determine if the current ventilation rate is adequate or if adjustments are necessary. The CO2 sensor provides a control signal based on the measured CO2 concentration. As CO2 levels rise due to occupancy or other factors, the sensor sends a signal to the Building Automation System, BAS, or the Economizer Control System. When the CO2 concentration surpasses a preset threshold, often referred to as the set point, the Economizer Control System increases the outdoor air intake. This adjustment brings in more fresh air from the outside to dilute the CO2 and maintain acceptable indoor air quality. The set point for the CO2 concentration can be adjusted based on the specific requirements of the space and occupant density. Differential pressure sensor. Differential pressure sensors in combination with variable frequency drives, VFDs, can be used to control the speed of pumps in a system. Here's a general explanation of how this control mechanism works. Differential pressure sensors are installed in the system to measure the pressure difference between two points, typically just before the most remote coil in the system. The sensor measures the difference in pressure across a flow element, such as an orifice plate or a flow sensor. The differential pressure sensor provides a feedback signal to the control system, indicating the actual pressure differential in the system. This feedback is used to determine the flow rate and the speed of the pump using a variable speed drive VFD. See our other video on how VFDs work. A desired or target differential pressure set point is established based on the system requirements and design parameters. The control logic compares the actual differential pressure feedback signal with the set point. Based on the comparison between the actual differential pressure and the set point, the control logic determines whether the pump speed needs to be adjusted. The control logic sends a control signal to the VFD to modulate the speed of the pump motor. The VFD receives the control signal and adjusts the frequency and voltage supplied to the pump motor accordingly. By reducing or increasing the frequency, the VFD changes the speed at which the pump motor operates. As the pump speed changes, the flow rate through the system is adjusted. The control system continuously monitors the differential pressure and adjusts the pump speed through the VFD as necessary to maintain the desired set point and optimize system performance. By utilizing the feedback from differential pressure sensors and adjusting the pump speed through VFD control, the system can effectively maintain a desired pressure differential, regulate flow rates, and achieve energy savings by matching the pump speed to the system's actual requirements. Occupancy or motion sensors. These sensors detect the presence or absence of people in a room or area. They are commonly placed in spaces such as offices, meeting rooms, restrooms, and hallways to control lighting, HVAC systems, and security systems based on occupancy. Static pressure sensor. A static pressure sensor is commonly used to control fan speed and maintain a desired static pressure within a duct. The static pressure sensor is typically installed at a strategic location or approximately two-thirds of the way down the main ductwork. The static pressure sensor contains a pressure sensing element such as a diaphragm that is exposed to the air pressure in the system. As the air flows, the pressure changes and the diaphragm deflects in response to these pressure variations. The deflection of the diaphragm generates an electrical signal proportional to the static pressure. This signal is transmitted to the control system for further processing. The control system is programmed with a desired static pressure set point, which represents the target pressure level. The control logic continuously compares the measured static pressure from the sensor with the set point. Based on the comparison between the measured static pressure and the set point, the control logic determines whether the fan speed needs adjustment to maintain the desired static pressure. If the measured static pressure deviates from the set point, the control logic sends a control signal to the fan motor or a variable frequency drive VFD to adjust the speed of the fan motor. There is a variation of the fixed static pressure set point strategy that uses resetting 
of the static pressure set point based on the feedback of terminal damper positions. By utilizing a static pressure sensor in conjunction with fan control systems, HVA systems can maintain the desired static pressure levels or reset levels, optimize airflow, and ensure efficient operation. This control mechanism helps balance air distribution, control temperature differentials, and improve energy efficiency in HVAC applications. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.